Look at the time it is. Look, and I've hardly even spoken a word. 21 minutes to 11 o'clock. Gerald Michael Anderson here. Good morning. Welcome to the programme. Thank you for not smoking. The number to ring if you want to contact this programme is 08459 555678. See, they're going to ban smoking in all GAA clubs in Northern Ireland. What is the point of that? The jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. They'll remove the crack the same way as the crack has been removed from pubs across the border. Have you been down in South recently? All the pubs are no good at all. There's no crack at all. Remember the guys used to stand in the barn shout and roar and ball out of him? He's outside or he's at home. He's not in the pub. The fellow used to have the fag hanging out of the mouth. He's not there. He's gone. There's no crack anymore. Anyway, that's another story. I don't want to talk about that. I know I'm talking too fast. I'm going to slow down in a moment. Anyway, if you can send me a text message, please do. I won't read it, of course, but you'll have the knowledge that you have sent it. After all, it is your BBC, if you can get past the man at the door. And the number again, the phone number again, if you want to contact this programme, is 08459 555678. I've been told that the listening facility on the internet for this programme is not working today. I have to apologise on behalf of all the BBC staff. I don't know if this is true or not, or maybe it's just one person, namely Maria Barnes who's listening and says she can't hear but if she's listening and she can't hear, maybe she's not the only one after all, the TV the internet does not discriminate What? Colm Oh, turn me down Are you loud today, are oh, you? Oh, God just, Is that one there? Is it that one there? I don't know well, Let me just check, is that any louder? No Is it that one there? Is it that one? No Is it that one there? Is it that one? Do you not know what? No, they all look the same to me Is it that one there? No. I've got a whole lot here. Is it that one? Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm going to turn it down. Ah! Is, that, is it that one? I was waiting for you. See, I was waiting for you. I anticipated this. Yes. No, let, let me turn it. Put, put your headphones no, on No, don't put them on. That's good. I'm no, keeping... no, no. Check that. I'm, I'm afraid to. No, put them on. It's okay. Ah! <laughs> no, no, don't do that. I won't do that again, I swear. I won't do hmm? that again. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's only pleasure, I get. Don't you realise that? <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Is that you, Jerry? I'm afraid that there's no need to shout. Good. Talking in a normal voice. There was a guy on there yesterday. Yes. He was talking about Catherine Cena Jones. Yes, indeed. I was there that night. Oh, were you? Yeah. Well, did you notice the sparks flying between us? Yes. Let me just explain for the benefit of the listeners. Uh, we were talking yesterday about it. I used to do a TV show a long time ago before I was thrown out. I used to do a talk show on a Friday night. And uh, there was some controversy. Catherine Zeta Jones was on that one night. Took a note of me and wanted my body. But I told her I was already spoken for. But she was very persistent. I managed to beat her off. Then she went off to Hollywood and found Michael Douglas and now lives in a villa in Mallorca. And indeed is building a house of her own in Wales. But then again, that's another story. And people were doubting the veracity of this tale. And Mr. Coyle in particular, who doubts everything I see, even though he was probably there, doesn't, but didn't believe that Catherine Cedar jones was there. And indeed, you can uh, vouch for it. And I asked anyone who had been there that night to come along and vouch safe for the fact that Sparks did indeed uh, fly between us. Hello? Hello. You were there that night? My brother was singing on the show that night. Who was your brother? Michael Toho. I don't and remember. And he's Rod Stewart. What was he? What was he kind of a? What was he doing? Was he kind of a, a female impersonator? He sang what? Maggie May. Did he? And he danced all up and down the audience. I danced up and down the you audience. You don't remember that? No, it must have made little impact upon me. I have to say, I'm right no recollection of that whatsoever. But then again, I was smitten. Well, you see, Jerry, I was invited up to the green room after. Yes. With Catherine Cedar Jones. Yes. Rob C. Nesbitt. That's right. He was on too. And I think Stephen Ray was there, the S- actor. Stephen Ray? Was he yes. really? I, I think rem- so. I, I may be rem- getting mixed up here now. I don't think he was there, but nevertheless, he could be. But um, anyhow. Did you not see her hanging on to me at every part? No, let me explain something, Jerry. We, we went up to the green room. The family was all invited up, you see? Yes. And I'm sitting with Rob C. Nesbitt. <laughs> and then walks Catherine Cedar. Fine looking the green pup. Room. Fine looking pup, wasn't she? Now, she walked straight past you. Oh, she probably didn't recognise me. And she seen me, and she come over to me. Excuse she me a sec. For me. Who is this liar? It's, uh, that's a terrible thing to call. No, Colin. that's the truth. That's, was I there, Colin? Sean, you weren't there. Well, who? who you, weren't, you weren't employed for, but at, with Jerry at that stage. Yeah, well, who, who, who introduced your 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 brother? Was, was I not a, a man with a clipboard introducing him? I can't remember. You see, yeah, what, an impact. A, what an impact! What an impact you made, Sean. Eight years ago, here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, anyway, so tell, tell me, tell me more lies about this night. Catherine came over and sat with me and Rob C. Nesbitt, and we had a drink, and she was there doing her new single. That's that right. Night. Yes, she was with singing. The group. She was singing at the time. Yes. 
and she walked straight past you, Jerry, and she sat with me. Well, we had arrangements to meet later whenever Colin and Colin well, people went away. Well, I don't know about that, but she invited me over to the Europa Hotel for a drink after that. Well, did so she? So you weren't mentioned the whole night. That's because she knew what room I was in. Now, she went up to the bar. She was going up to the bar to get a drink. The way all the drinks are free and the wee buffet and all that. Oh, I remember it well. And I said to her, I said, Catherine, would you mind giving me another tin of beer when you're up there? And bring me down a wee mixture of the buffet. But she said, certainly, Colm. She served you? But she walked straight past you going to the bar. And she came back down to me again. Well, you see, she didn't want to give the impression that she was in love with me because people I would have talked. She, there was no the, interest at all there, Jerry, you know. The, there were representatives from the press there, and you know what they're like, the red tops. She didn't want to kind of, you know, zone in on me right away, but uh, things I happened later, I have it, to Jerry. say. I don't think it, you know. It's a good job you came over. You didn't come because over to the Rob hotel. C, we had a great night together, me and Rob seen this, but I had a friend with me, Jerry Campbell, and we had a great night. Well. And you stood at the bar all night practically on your own. <laughs> This is more like the truth. Yes, you know. yes. <coughs> Where was this called? In the Europa? This is on the BBC on Great Victoria Street. I mean, oh, yeah, this I, is, I, the, is, is this the, the green room? Yes, that's what it's called, yes. Sean. Yes. No, but, I heard Carl mention the Europa. <coughs> I thought maybe you'd gone to Europa. This no, place. that was later. No, that's no, one. I, she invited me to the Europa, but Jerry so, was in Manchester. So she was nowhere near Jerry? Nowhere near him that night. Mm -hmm. now, okay, she was on his show, but that was it. Yeah. She might have got the brown envelope off Jerry, but... Came uh, over to me, you know, ignored right. Jerry the rest of the night. I yeah. think that's a very cruel thing for you to say, to propagate lies like that. Well, that's the truth. That's the only, you know you weren't there. There's a lot of lies in your show. I'm only getting back at you. She was mad about you me. You people the world and you don't give them the world. She was mad about me. She never no. spoke to you. She did. So he was there. He was a liar. I was there, Jerry. All right, then. Was, we've run out of time. Was we... your brother Rod Stewart there? Yes. Well, then. Well, right. can he corroborate your can story? Can we get him? I'll get him to ring you. No, there's no need for yes, that. Yes, please do. There's no need for lines. that. There's no need for that at all. <laughs> all right, then. Listen, the time is passing by. Uh, right. I have to go now. Well, Please. goodbye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I said, shame on you. You didn't like that, did you? Shame on you for bringing that liar on. You were ignored. Him, by... By... Did it me? Yes. Of course not. Mm. Absolutely not. I have some stuff to do here. Do you mind if I turn you off? Please do. Right. Listen, I want to talk to a man who does the Sunday Times crossword. You don't any, know what any, I'm talking about, do you? Man. No, he's a man who's lost... Uh... Hold on a minute. I have a book here. See my new book? What have you got a book? I've got a book here. What have you a book? Do you know what I noticed the other day? Do you know why people ring you up and they tell you important things and you write phone numbers down, you know, in the backs of envelopes and stuff like uh -huh. that? I discovered that... See if I get a book like this, you know, the red back on it. See that book? How's you lose that? <laughs> it's very big to lose. What I'm going to do is every day I'm going to take a page and I'm going to put the date on it. Look, there's the date yesterday on that page. And anybody who rings me that day, I'll write down their details and the number that they gave me. So any time Sunday... Remember I rang you last Wednesday? All I have to do is flick back to last Wednesday. So I've, there's, there's two numbers here for yesterday. <laughs> Well, will you will you write in that book things that things that what you have to do? No, that's not. I've got a different book for that. This what? is for, this is for, for people who ring me up and give me numbers and tell me things. I've got a different book writing stuff. It's called a diary. Things I have to do. This, this is no, not but a this diary. is this is things like this is a contact. Book. No, but um, putting things in that book there like uh, must make CD for Jordy and send it to. No, no, you can't like do that. that. No, well, that's not for that. Uh, that's for your book, the book that you write. That's things for you to do. I can't be wasting my valuable time doing things for listeners. You know, because that's not why I'm here. I'm here to pretend to be caring. And it's you, up to you to follow it through by doing Will the things. Will you say hello and play something nice for Lily Gibson? Lily's I will indeed, Lily Gibson. Of course I will. Lily's just out of hospital. And this is, is she, from is she Anne, okay? Yes, yeah, she's, she's from prison. She's fine, okay. And uh, she's from, uh, this is from Andy and Liz. Mm. And also Alan Brower. In Belfast they say the Mater Hospital. We say the Matter. We say the Matter, you say Mater, yeah, either or either. Let's that? call the whole thing off. Yeah. The mater? The matter. You see? Tomato. The mater. The matter. Tomato. The matter. Tomato. The mater. Potato, potato. The matter. Let's call the whole thing off. All right. Alan Browers writes to me on by via email, and he says, please, could you help me? I've been trying to phone your show from Monday with no luck. Nobody seems to be answering. That's not true. That's what he says. I'm looking a trampoline for my kids, and I'm finding it hard to get one. And I know if anyone can help me, it will be you. So that's an old one. I know it's an old one. It's not an old one. It's yesterday. It couldn't be. Listen, there are more than one people looking... <laughs> sure, I'm sure there are. <laughs> There's more than one person looking for a trampoline. I live in Belfast, but I'm prepared to travel. Have trampoline, will travel. 
You see, Jerry, it's my nine-year-old daughter's birthday on Friday and she wants one. I would need an eight-foot or a ten-foot trampoline. Please, Jerry, try and help me think of the children. We always do in this programme. Uh, also, here's I one for you, love. I think very dangerous. What? A trampoline? They'd be extremely dangerous. Remember the time we were on one? I'll never forget it. That's why I think they'd be extremely dangerous. Very sore in your legs. Shouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy them to chill them. Actually, you wouldn't buy anything. Uh, here's one for you, look. How did I get my pile? Mm. It says, hi, Sean. All right. Where is that money you owe me? <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Can, could you play a request for my girlfriend, Mary Crillian? Oh, Mary Crillian, that's mine. What's it doing in my pile? I, I get that all the time. She's in Scotland. Well, what's it doing in my pile? You nuked it. I didn't nuke it. Well, I read this. If is it want. personal? No. Sean, I love the way you slip your... Um, <laughs> but Mary Crilly in Scotland, she is probably listening online. She's probably not today because apparently you can't hear this programme online today. Currently, apparently it's broke. Why? I don't know. A couple of people have contacted me and said they can't hear the programme on the internet today. Well, we would need to hear from people who can't hear. <laughs> if anyone can't hear the programme, will you contact us? Okay. Right? Yeah, she's probably listening online like she does usually every day. That's bad grammar, but sure. That's yeah. one of your friends. Would you play Mike Silver? Yes. Who's Mike matter, Silver? Mike Silver, Matter of Pride. Pardon? What's the song's called? Uh, Jeff says here, Mike Silver, Not a Matter of Pride, yeah. because that is our favourite song. Yeah. If you're unable to play that song, yeah. would you play Denise Hagen with Finbar Fury, The Sparkle in Your Eye? Mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell Mary that I love her so much. I'm looking forward to seeing her on Saturday in Glasgow. Well, as a matter of fact, you know, it's not funny. Because as a matter of fact, I uh, decided earlier on today to bring down with me Denise Hagen and indeed, uh, what do you call the other fella? Finbar. Finbar Fury. I decided to bring that down with me. And here I have it in front of me. Isn't that amazing? Oh, it's really amazing. Don't be so sarcastic. No. I'm just trying to whip up a little enthusiasm, which would be great. You'd probably get more money if you did that too. A man was showing me tricks last night. <laughs> Was he really? Yeah. Any good ones? Never. <laughs> <laughs> I know a trick or two myself. Yeah. What was he showing you? Ah, uh, this is. Uh, this is a, a man. This is. Come uh, 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 on. What do you mean? What was? He, it was. It was. What kind of tricks was he showing you? No, he, uh, he asked. He asked me. He put down like hearts, diamonds, spades, and you know. He wrote oh, card out, tricks. You know that? No, but there are no cards. Oh, you play card tricks with no cards. No cards. Yeah. It's quite difficult. And then pick pick two suits. No, you need to start again. What, right. what, what did he do? Right, he puts down hearts. What, what do you mean? What does he put down? Right, right, he writes down, he writes the word heart. He writes the right, word right, heart. Right, Let right. me do that. Right. I'll write the word heart here. Yeah, but I don't know how the trick works. Heart, diamond, spades and clubs. Heart, diamond, spades, clubs. Yeah, and then you, you, you pick two. Hearts, diamond, spades and clubs. Pick, okay, pick two. I pick heart and I pick spades. Well, you pick heart and you pick spades. You pick heart, so you've got D and C left. You've got diamonds and clubs left. D, C, yes. And then you, you, oh, see, what do you do then? You pick a card uh, from ten, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, or ace. Pick. I'll pick an ace. All right. You, I don't know what happens then. You don't I, know what happens no, after that? No, I don't know what happens what after that. What kind of people do you talk to at night? This is a man last night showing me... Uh, Did he come up to your house to show you this? No, I was at a... Little, where were you? I was at a little function last. Were you really? Where was it? Uh, 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 there's a little charity CD being launched here in Derry last night. Oh, I know, in the Abercorn Bar. Yes, and Noel McBride, which is Noel's quite, Noel McBride. Well, quite well known and around Belfast. He is indeed. Area, well, well does he Ireland. tell any new jokes yet? Not yet. No, he's, he's getting to it. Still depending on the old ones. Yeah. And he is he okay? Is he fine? Is he all no, right? it was actually, it was very funny. He's very uh, funny. He is very funny. And he was showing me card tricks without cards oh, last night, and they were amazing. They were, they were very good. I was, I was taken by Is there the something thing. we should go down the road of, you know, because I, I don't know of any other broadcaster who does uh, card tricks without cards. Or indeed, I've never seen that on television. Maybe perhaps you get him. No, you better not get him in here. You know what he's like. No, I'm, 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 I'm getting him on. I'm getting him on. I'll get him on. Oh, you're getting him on your I get him on show. the wee show Oh, on Friday. I see. Well, unless you want him on the big show. No, I don't want I want this. I want, it's an amazing trick. Amazing trick, yeah. Cards with no cards. Yeah. Excellent. Fine, yeah. fine. I hope that all goes well for you. Yeah. Hugh is on the line. Good morning, Hugh. Good morning, uh, Jerry. How are you? I'm fine, Hugh. I was I talking to you earlier on. It's to meet you, Jerry, after so many years. Uh, I think about 31 years I met you before. Yeah, we know each other earlier on today, uh, before I came on air, you were telling me about your uh, 30 predicament. 30 years and 362 days, I think we talked before that, you know. But I never had a much chance to ask you, where where did we meet, actually? We met at a place called Bradley's Corner, Desert Martin. Uh, uh, you may remember the place. Uh, I think there was a big uh, dance hall or something going on there. There was a dance going on and bingo and all the usual things, you know. Yes, I remember Desert Martin quite well, actually. Because you know I'll Desert Martin? I'll tell you why, because um, when I was a young, callow youth, I used to commute 
from you... Cookstown to London Dre. Oh, then you'd pass by my place, Jerry. Indeed, I used to hitchhike. The only mistake you made, you didn't call them. No, but you see, you don't call them when you're hitchhiking. People think you're after something. <laughs> see, there was <laughs> but no. I know you're after something. I used to stand. I stood in the corner. There's a little junction there. No way you turn right in Desert Martin. Exactly. Exactly. Well, yes. Many's the time I stood. There used to be a wee wall. I used to sit on it. I beg your pardon. There used to be a little wall there. I used to sit on it. You did. I was right to the time of the, the time of the bingo. Yes. That's right. Oh, that's, that's been a long time, but uh, it's a good pleasure to talk to you, Jerry, because you're a very famous gentleman. Indeed, yes, I. Nobody knew me then. Uh, well, uh, nobody sit... knew us all at one stage, but uh, that's true. we're supposed to come quite well known at the moment, as far as I know now. Well, you're quite well known as well. <laughs> I know a wee bit about you. You're a uh, a regular contributor to one of the uh, prestigious Sunday newspapers. Oh somewhere. yes. How do you know about that? I knew because you told me. Oh yes, and you didn't know any other way then. <laughs> <laughs> you, the Sunday, you appear in the Sunday Times every Sunday. What, what do you no, do? No, not quite, Jay. Uh, uh, if you pardon me for offering a few corrections there, uh, it's not the crossword, it's actually the, the brain teaser. The brain teaser, yes. yes. Did you, you get the facts of the, the, the current brain teaser? You I did. sent you a fax this morning. Of it. Oh, I didn't get that. Oh, fax, you no, that. you don't get faxes here. They disappeared down some hungry maw. No, the best thing to send me is an email. Never send me a fax. I never oh, I get see, it. Right. Well, well, I'm a wee bit, uh, wee bit uh, 19th century, sir. Sorry. I'm not very good at emails, but I, I do. Be, I can send faxes, you know. Uh, uh, Hugh, where anyway, uh, that's uh, excuse me, there's someone trying to interrupt. No, 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 Hugh, wh where, what number did you send it to? Uh, the lady down in Belfast gave me a number. Uh, I can tell you, I, I sent it to uh, seven one. Three seven eight travel six. Travel six. Yeah, we're just checking it now. Then travel okay. six, the mark of the beast. Right. Okay. That's, yeah, right, that's right. correct. That's yeah. me already. Happy yeah. now. I'm happy now. We'll but see, this man does the brain teaser in the Sunday Times. Yeah. Well, when did you start doing that? You don't sound to me like a kind of a man who would do a brain teaser. If you don't mind me saying so. Oh, yeah, quite welcome. Yeah, I, I, you don't I, sound I, like I, a man I, who's kind of you know had a university uh, training or anything oh, at yes, all. Oh yes, yes. But uh, my great uh, pleasure is to just the ordinary. You know, I don't want to sound very erudite. You know, or very learned. You know, so I'm, I'm not really very well. Up. The only thing I know is how little I know. You know. Well, you're the type of guy I like. You see, because the other ones are a pain in the arse. Well, yeah, they're, they're, well, uh, a pain in the arse is not very pleasant. Yeah. No, they're not because you know you, you meet them at parties and stuff. You know, they yeah, how are you? You get the boys that knows it all. You know. Ah, you know, there's so many of them about. And half of them in the BBC as well. So well, tell me, when did, how did you get to do the Sunday Times brain before teaser? Before you talk about uh, the Sunday Times, Jerry, I hope I'm not slavering away here and wasting your time. No, no it's me that's slavering. Well, I worked in the BBC myself. Did you really? You'd hardly believe that, would you? No, I believe it. What did you do in the BBC? I was an engineer listening to Gary transmitting station. But that's a good job. You don't have to do any spoofing or kissing people in the cheek and looking over their shoulders. You just, <laughs> well, uh, you just get your spanner out. There's no such thing as a good job, Jerry. Well, no, no. Boss, you know. Well, yes, I don't. I hesitate to call this a job in case somebody might. Well, think. you made you made me the exception. There's an exception to every rule, you know. That's right. <laughs> but uh, there's a couple of things now. First of all, you worked in the BBC as an engineer. Yes. So how did you get to do the brain teaser in the Sunday Times? Will you tell me? Do I have to drag it out of you? I certainly will do my best to tell you. There's a friend of mine. Uh, first of all, did you get the facts? We no. checked. We checked the machine. It's not there. It hasn't well, come through. Well, if you did, you'd have noticed that uh, I'm in con my uh, authorship of the uh, brain teaser conjunction with uh, Christopher Higgins, a chap called Chris Higgins. You see? Yes. And Christopher Higgins worked at one time over in England, in London, or somewhere. And he was working for a very uh, important gentleman called Sir Kenneth McMillan. Yes. Right. Yes. You still with me? Then? I'm with you. Yes, Kenneth McMillan. So Kenneth, he had a habit of doing the Sunday Times brain teasers, which appear every week in the Sunday Times. You see? Yes. And one day, Kenneth came out with a big piece of paper in his hand. Chris was doing his greenhouse or something. You know, Chris is a, a very uh, capable builder, you see. Yes. So, uh, Ken so Kenneth says, Chris, I wonder, could you help me with this brain teaser? Chris, he says, what's the brain teaser? So he showed him, and uh, then after that, Chris got interested and tried to do them himself, you see. Yes. So eventually, Chris arrived back to square one down to Bradley's Corner here, and uh, he came over to me one day, and he says, uh, he says, could you uh, help me out with this brain teaser? And of course, I helped him out with it. Yeah. Then we did it a few weeks uh, following that, you see. And then one day I said to myself, I wonder what these boys that put some brain teeth have got that I don't have, you see. So I tried one myself, you see. And I was successful. It was deemed to be reasonably good, you know. Yeah. So uh, following that on, Jerry, I've been putting them on for years and years and years, you know. The people don't know that the brain teaser from the Sunday Times generally comes from... Uh Bradley's Corner and Desert Martin. That's right, that's right. Well, could you give me an example of what a brain teaser is? What kind of things are brain teaser is um, a devious mathematical... Uh, uh, Conundrum, perhaps. It's, it's not a straightforward A-level question, Jerry. No. It's a devious sort of thing where you have to uh, think... Uh, you know, People sometimes talk about thinking sideways or 
thinking laterally, you know. Lateral thinking. It's yes. a pity that uh, you haven't got that one. You could read it out far better than me, but it's, it's so long on that I think your listeners would get bored to death after about the third lane, you know. No, they get bored to death with me you after You want me to read a wee bit of the last one? Yeah, they're bored to death with me already. I've been on an hour. Well, if they're bored to death with you, I don't want them bored to death with me. No, you carry on. Give us it, because there are people out there... Because, you see, this is very unusual, you see. That's very unusual, yes. Well, give, just read it out slowly, and right, maybe yeah. people well, can now, have a this, crack. This teaser was paid last Sunday. Right. And if there's, called, if there's, number, there's a teaser, there's a number for every Sunday, you see, and it's been going on for 30 or 40 years. This one is 2180. Indicating that it's gone on for about 30 years or so. Right. You divide that by 52, you get I know uh, 30 or 40 years yes. or something like that. Yes. Now, the, the title was Key to Success. Right. right? And it was based on uh, the usual thing where people fill in their, their lottery numbers every week and hope to make 14 million or 3 million or whatever it is. The, you know? the, the fools, the fools. So, uh, yeah. the, brain as, uh, the authors are listed here as myself, that's Hugh Bradley and Christopher Higgins. Okay. <coughs> right? <coughs> Excuse me. That's quite all right. Uh, <coughs> I'll start off reading now, and if you, when you get bored to death, just tell me. You, you know? carry on. We have a system for choosing our six lottery numbers each week. Each week, we choose four two-figure primes. Now, later on, I'll tell you what a prime is, which we call our key numbers. Yes. And we write them in a long row to form an eight-digit list of numbers, which is easy enough to understand. You write the four numbers one after the other, you see? Yes. Now, we continue on from that. From this list, two successive digits are chosen to form our first two-figure lottery number. Yes. Full stop. Proceed as follows. Then, similarly, another two successive digits, neither of which can be one of the original key numbers, form our second lottery number. And then we use the remaining four digits to form our other four single-figure numbers. Right. Then, if the, if the six numbers in this way do make up a legal set of numbers, then we use them as an entry. If they're within the parameters of the lottery <laughs> numbers. Are you with me so far? I'm with you. <laughs> I know you've understood every word of it. I'm hanging in there with my fingernails. Uh, now, I'm going ahead. We did this successfully last week, and it turned out that the sum of our six numbers was exactly half the sum of the four key numbers. Full stop. We have chosen, chosen some new numbers this week and have again produced a successful set of numbers whose sum is exactly half the sum of the key numbers. But this week's total is higher than last week's total. And then the, uh, the punchline is... What is the sum of our six lottery numbers this week? <laughs> there you are. Is it a rollover? Have you got that sorted out? I'm just, just give me a moment. I'm just finishing <laughs> it off. What what did you come up with, Mr. Cohen? I beg your pardon? I'm just asking Mr. Uh, memory here. I, what, what did you come up with? I've got the Ace of Diamonds. Oh, <laughs> I got the two of spades. Well, uh, I'm going now to tell you the answer, Jerry. Maybe people listening there would like to send this in. Okay. And uh, you can actually send them the answer to the Sunday Times, Pennington Street, London. Yes. E ninety eight one S J. Echo ninety eight one Sammy Johnson. Is that the answer? Uh, and the answer is six. I thought that's is that the is that the postcode? That's the postcode. I thought I'll that was the answer that. to the. I thought that was the answer. Sorry, no, go no, ahead. I'll give you the answer in one minute. Right. Send in your answer to Teaser two one eight zero, Sunday Times, one Pennington Street, London. E ninety eight one S J S for Sammy. Sammy. Now the answer that you'll send in if you want to one twenty quid is uh, sixty three. The answer is sixty three. Last week. Sixty. So it's I'll, an interesting business. I'll tell you what. There's more going on in Bradley's Corner and Desert Martin than there would be near in most places. Uh, this there's is, plenty going on that I haven't even mentioned so far. This is smart <laughs> stuff here. This is very smart stuff. Uh, yes. Uh, so how did you get? Have you any background in mathematics at all, apart from the fact that? Well, I actually, I had the I had the good fortune to attend the rainy school in my younger days. You know, rainy school, school in Dungannon. I'm sure you know it. In Dungannon. No, a rainy school uh, is in Mafferfelt. Oh, I'm sorry. Unless I'm sorry. No, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry, I got mixed <laughs> up. Yeah, felt you. And, and did you have a flair for mathematics? Yeah, I, well, uh, modestly I could say possibly that, yes. Uh, my math teacher there was a gentleman called James McAteer. Yes. James McAteer, and I'm very glad and delighted to say that James is still alive and well yet. Still kicking. After so many years, you know. Right. Well, did you go anywhere after the college? Did you well, go to I university? Went to, I went to Queen's, yes. You went to Queen's? Yes. And well, what did you do there? Well, I studied engineering there. Yeah, but, of course, mathematics would have been vital. Mathematics and engineering, as you well know, are tied up together. Of know? course they are. But yeah. you you never uh, thought of going on to do pure mathematics or anything, uh, <coughs> any sole well, mathematics-based uh, course? It's a very... Blue, uh, blue, uh, no, not a very clear dividing line between pure math and, and practical math or ordinary math, you know. Yeah, but I don't mean pure math in particular. I mean in the sense of a, a, a straight mathematics degree. 
you, you never thought of doing anything? Well, you see, in engineering, you really do have to do a, a fair wee bit of maths, you know. It's, it's a, you have to do maths as applied to practical problems, you know, which is possibly the best sort of maths, you know. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you're a bright guy. But uh, uh, I was just going to mention, uh, a lot of your listeners there, you'll remember a gentleman called Tom Fusakali. He was a, a really hard taskmaster at the Rainy School, but he was a great mathematician, you know. Yeah. And he used to uh, teach us maths, and he expected us to get the answers right every time, you know. And well, I can tell you a wee funny story about that, Jay. Go ahead. He was, uh, one day he was pontificating on a, a piece of equipment called a concave mirror. Yes. Which um, is, in fact, uh, very like the mirror that you see in a motor car headlamp there, you know. Yes, I suppose. It's a concave. Con- Most as people know what that means. You know. I suppose sort of the convex. It's a saucer shape thing, yes. you know. Yes. And uh, he was asking me what I thought about this, you see. Well, where I love it, we were, at that time, we were engaged in, uh, on hunting rabbits, you see. Yeah. <laughs> that was my main occupation. I was at night with a dog or a gun short, uh, shooting after the rabbit. So uh, Mr. Pazagli says to me, well, what do you think of the concave mirror? And he had given us a pile of mathematical formula relating to the particular curve, you know. I says it'd be a good job for lumping rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he was abused at this, you know, although he doesn't show it at the time, you know. He liked to keep himself very distant, you know. But you see, put it this way, you see, there are very few mathematicians go out at night shooting rabbits. Do you know very what I mean? Very few mathematicians what? Yeah, there's very few mathematicians go out at night shooting rabbits. No, see, that is true, that is true. Well, you see, you're, 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 we're all, we're you, all slightly would, different. You, you would know? be unique here, you see. You, uh, well, you, you uh, wouldn't meet too many here. people in the Sunday well, Times. Where would you get anybody more unique than Jerry Anderson? Well, I don't know. At least I, I don't shoot rabbits. I know nothing about mathematics, so you've got to drop on me there. Oh, well, I wouldn't believe that. Everybody knows a bit about mathematics, uh, Jerry. Well, they do a bit. Everybody you, knows a bit, yes. A lot so of people... You. you wouldn't have a lot in common with a lot of people who are working on the Sunday Times. Actually, uh... There's a, there's a few thousand or a few hundred thousand people read the brain teaser every week over the world, you know. Uh-huh. Well, and sure, they, they send on the answer. They, they, right. love, they love, they, they love uh, perusing through the Sunday Times and getting the answer every week, you know. Yeah. A, in fact, there's a lady very near me called Alan Elliot. She's a real fan of mine, you know. Mm. She gets well, listen, the answer quite often. I have to tell the listeners this, that you rang me up this morning. Yes. And now, don't be telling me, don't say anything a moment. I'm going to tell the listeners. You rang me up this morning about nine o'clock and you told me you were just a man who ran, you rang up and you said you'd lost a heifer. That's right. So I said, you lost a heifer. So, and uh, you told me a heifer. And then he started to tell me all this stuff. Yes. And I mean, you're a very amazing guy, I have you to see, say. Yeah, if I hadn't told you something, you probably wouldn't. You'd switch me off after about two minutes, you see. No, no, didn't I hang on with you with a heifer? Well, you're very generous, but... Uh, Don't I, tell me about I, your heifer now. I think you thought I was talking about a, a red bull. I thought you were talking about, you said you lost your red bull. I, that's right, I have a pug here, you see. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, seriously, Jerry, can I be quite serious for just a few seconds, you know? Yes. Uh, I did lose a heifer, a red heifer, a red looking heifer on my did. farm here. Yes, I know you did. And, Tell us a wee bit about that. Uh, well, they, uh, this red heifer, uh, it was probably uh, suckling a cow, you see, uh, previous to the day that I bought it, you see, which I wasn't aware of. And uh, naturally, when I brought the beast home, you see, he got a wee bit homesick, you know, so he decided that they had enough of me, you see. Uh-huh. So he decided I was gone, so he disappeared completely. And, of course, I have uh, asked everybody in the pub, my pub, uh, Bradley's pub here, this Martin, I've asked everybody, and I've actually tried to put it in the paper, which I shall talk more about in a minute or two. Yes. But uh, I tried everybody, and uh, then some of my friends, I think it was uh, Alwyn or Chris Higgins or somebody, says, why did you try Jerry Anderson? Maybe he would uh, do a wee program I mentioned on the program. Indeed, so yes. I thought that would be a great idea, you know. Oh, yes. So the actual beast that I lost is not, a, not the... Uh, red bull that we're joking about, but just seriously, a red heifer. Yeah. It's a limousine red heifer, about 350 kilograms in weight. Stands about, roughly about three or four feet high. It's not the biggest beast or the smallest, but the medium-sized one, you know. And where would it be in transit well, to, I Well, I'm going to tell you where I would estimate uh, it would be. It would probably be within a circle if you started money more. You head across to Dripperstown, then you go down to Mahara, and then you pull across to Nuclochram, and right across to Castle Dawson, and then up to Martin Felt, and back to Money Moor. Uh, a circle of that t- particular dimension, uh, that's probably where it's at, you know. The so if there's some somewhere. good-natured farmer in that region that knows or has it in his head, if he would be good enough to ring me up and tell me, or, or uh, my number, of course, is uh, 796-31. All right, then. Or just ring Bradley's at the Pope Desert Mart. Well, I'll tell you one thing here. As a result of this programme and as a result of the way you've been talking today, I would say you get one or two guys calling into your pub to f- see what well, you like. Well, Jerry Anderson might call on somebody. He well might, and it that'd doesn't be the work. That would be the biggest achievement of the whole lot. If you drop him. Well, you, you don't realise that I don't pay for drink. Jerry, did I mention money? <laughs> no, but I'm just warning you. <laughs> oh, but you've no call to warn me, Jerry, for I've been in the pub that long and I can sense all these peculiarities with people like yourself. Then. You can spot them coming in. Jerry, uh, one of my fans has come from Poland. Yes. 
uh, uh, and uh, he was good enough to send me a, a poem in Polish. Yes. But now I'm not going to try to read out Polish because I'm no good at Polish. I'm surprised you sound to be like a man. I read you out a little bit of the, uh, the uh, English translation. Go ahead. But that wouldn't be too long wanted for you, would it? Go ahead. Now, the, the moral of this, uh, and I'm sure you'd agree, Jay, the moral of this is that nothing ever happens twice. You know, you only get one honeymoon the first one, you know. Well. And you only get one interview with Jerry Anderson the first time. You can make it an hour, but it'll be the second time, you know. That's right. So uh, the the um, title of this particular piece is Nothing Twice. And yes. if, you, if I don't bore you, I'll take a chance and read you about it. You, you know? carry on. That goes as follows. Nothing can ever happen twice. In consequence, the sorry fact is that we arrive here improvised and leave without the chance to practice. Second verse. Even if there is no one number, a few of the planet's biggest dumps, you can't repeat the class in the summer. This course is only offered once. Yeah. No day copies yesterday. No two nights will teach what bliss is in precisely the same way with exactly the same kisses. Yeah. One day, perhaps, some idle tongue mentions your name by accident. I feel as if a rose were flung into the room, all hue and scent. The next day, though you're here with me, I can't help looking at the clock. A rose, a rose, what could that be? Is it a flower or a rock? Why do we treat the fleeting day with so much needless fear and sorrow? It's in the nature not to stay. Today is always gone tomorrow. With smiles and kisses, we prefer to seek a chord beneath our star. Although we're different, we concur just as two drops of water are. That's the end of it. And it was written by a, po- a well-known Polish uh, Shakespeare called, and I'm going to try to pronounce his name, Wyslawa Samborska. Rather you than if me. If there's any Polish uh, people listening, they'll probably recognise that man's name. Well, I'll tell you what, Hugh, you're some pup. <laughs> you're some pup. I will try and find your heifer. Uh, uh, Jerry, uh, one more wee bit. I rang my local newspaper, and maybe you, uh, when I tell you the story, you can tell me where you want me to mention the name of the paper. Go ahead. You see, and I, I says, uh, I put it, asked them to put on a little ad in the lost and found, you see. Yeah. And I says, uh, uh, more or less uh, phrased the ad like this, uh, lost a limousine heifer, so-and-so, so-and-so, tag number, so-and-so. And then uh, if the finder uh, uh, rings me, I'll give him a bottle of potting. You see? <laughs> yes. So the... Uh, the uh, gentleman in charge of the baby rang me up and absolutely uh, uh, horrified. He says, good heavens, he says, we couldn't possibly put that in. He says, that's illegal. I says, not illegal at all, for I keep a bottle of that stuff at the head of the bed for to cure my flu. Absolutely. And, oh, I wouldn't have had a toll. So, and I said, well, what about putting in Mountain Dew? Oh, not at all. He says, well, that's the same thing. I says, you're a very clever chum. Well, then I says, I tell you, you'll be put in a bottle of good strong whiskey. <laughs> so he said he would do that, you see. Name that paper. Huh? Name that paper. The, the paper's the Middle Eastern Mail. <laughs> All right, then, Hugh. I, I, I think it's on to you. He'll blame you. He'll not blame no, that's me. That's quite all right. Listen, we'll be talking to you again, if you don't mind. Uh, yes, uh, you mind uh, if I ring every now and again? And, uh, don't forget to call on the pub here some night. Oh, I will. And uh, you don't need to worry about money. Uh, I saw George Best on the on it, and he said that he went up in the pub. He doesn't need money for everybody who wants to get stunned and drink. That's right. I made a note of that, Jerry, too. Uh, I, I reward you in the same way as I promised to us if you turn up with that heifer. All right, then. OK, anyone who sees your heifer, give us a ring here at 08459-555-678. We'll pass the information on to you, Hugh. Yeah, okay. you're more than generous. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, very. Bye. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. What a man he is. Hmm? Isn't he great? He absolutely. marries his wee jail. There's yeah. not too many people in Desert Martin doing the Sunday Times brain teaser. I know, I know another little thing about him that I want to talk to him privately about, but you'll be very interested in. And I'm sure everyone in Northern Ireland will be interested too, but I don't want to bring it up publicly. I want to talk to him privately to see if we can talk about it. Someone phoned there now to told me something about you. And that you want to check, check with him first, see if it's okay see before if you we, tell if us. We talk about it because if he says yes, you're like the guy in the Middle Eastern mail. No, 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 no. Because I want to check with you to see if Hugh, would you mind if we talk about? All this? right, could and be he, something, could be something sensitive. And if you, no, it's not. But if, if you says by all means, you talk about it, and then it's, ev- it's his business. Yeah, everyone in Northern Ireland will want it. Right. Everyone. Well, they do already. Yeah, <laughs> there's a man now going to do that trick. What? I've got the answer here. What is the answer? The trick. <laughs> The man wants to do the trick with you now. This is not the man I was talking to last night. Would you night. care to rephrase that? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? The trick that, that the man showed me last night. Ah, oh, for God's sake. No, listen, would you listen? This is another man who can demonstrate the trick. And I've got, I, I've got the card that you're going to pick here. He asked me to write it down in advance. 
So you, got, you, you have the name of a card... That you're going to pick. I'll read to okay. No, you can't write it down. I'm not going to write it down. I'm going to talk to him. Is yes. he there? He's on two. Which one did I just talk to him? Yes, and, that, and then... What? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, good morning, sir. You see, he's not there now. Hello? No, he's not on two. He should be on two. I don't know if he should be or not. He's not, I'm just saying. Want to try one? Try one. Hello, sir. That's, that's, that's you. That's you. Well, here, you just stay. Will you stay there? I'll stay here. I'm not going anywhere. Well, I'll hang up and I'll... You go. hang up, If the yeah. man's listening, tell him to hang up, because his line will be engaged when I ring him. That's all very complicated. Why did he go away for... I don't know why you went away. He's, he's Obviously, he's not confident. He's... he should know. Why don't I play something? No. I'm tired now. No, here, what do we say? I... What am I... Ach. Ach, he's now answering machine on. Yeah. What's he doing? Dach. The gentleman's on the... Hello, good morning. Ach, for God's he's sake. He's on two. Hello, good morning. Hello, Jay. You're the man who can do the cards with no cards. Well, I hope I can. We're going to try it now, because I, I, I tell you the truth, this only works with people from the very top end of the scale, or the very, you know, sort of... The you bottom end of the scale. So I'm hoping, sort of, that... Uh, are you talking uh, IQ here? I don't want to get into that now, right? Okay. You're familiar with the packs of cards, right? You're, you're a card man. You know Hearts Club, Simon Spade. I know yeah. what a card no, is, yes. No, listen, listen, right. listen, listen. Pa Pat, excuse me, man. Gerald. I'm not even listening Gerald. to him. Gerald. I'm not even listening look to him. Look at me for one second. I'm not looking at you. You must look at me. Well, I can't. Please look at me. I don't want to. Please. I know what you're like. Well, look at me hand. No. Look at me hand. No. Look what I've got in my hand. <laughs> look. I'm afraid to look. <laughs> <laughs> do you see that piece of paper there? Look, look at it. Well, you Lord Chamberlain? Look, do you see it? What? That piece of paper there. A piece in our time? Right. I'm going to leave it there where you can see it at all times. Neville Chamberlain. Right, there's that piece of paper. Fold it up. I haven't touched it now, right? I don't give a sh... No, no, you are going to That's, tell you're me going to what pick is written that on that bit of You're paper. going to tell us what's in that piece Mr. of paper. Mr. Coyle has waved the paper like Neville Chamberlain. You right. are going... But you, without seeing that paper... And with, you're, you're I can't see it. It's too far away. I'm looking paper. at it through the glass. I yes. see yeah. a piece of paper. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but I, you'll see me not touching it. What do you call that wee girl there? Emma. Well, can, will she not help me here? No, give it to you, her. You will now pick that piece of paper. I don't trust you. Give it to her. But you can see it at all times. I can't see it. It's there, look. But I can't read what's on it. I know. Let's lick, fold it, lick it up. and stick it to the, to the windowpane. I'm not going to lick it and stick it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop you before. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, well, okay. Right. That's, he's, he's not going to lick it or stick it. Right. Go ahead now. Go ahead. Proceed. Right. Briefly, Jay, I'm going to do the shortened version of this because the long version would take too much time. We've used up enough time already. There are four loos and there are uh, hearts, clubs, diamond spades, and we'll just deal with the court cards at the minute, okay? Well, hold on a minute. What's... What's a loo? Hearts, clubs, diamonds, or spades. Why did you just loo, say that yeah. instead well, of talking about loos? Right, okay. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is to pick any two. Hearts, clubs, diamonds, or spades. Clubs and spades. Right. Leaves you with hearts and diamonds. Pick one of them. Hearts and diamonds. I yeah. pick diamonds. It leaves you with hearts, right? So you've chosen hearts. Yes. Right, okay. There are four court cards. Jack, queen, king, and ace. Pick I'll any take an two ace. Of them. I'll take an ace. No, pick two of them. And a king. Ace and king. Ace and king. Leaves you with jack and queen. Jack and queen. Pick one of them. That'll be a jack. Uh, Sean, show him the card. It jack. should be a jack of hearts. Jack of hearts. There it is there. I can't see that. Well, you well, think I am a weasel? Well, it says on this piece of paper, jack of hearts. Give it to the wee girl. I don't she's, trust you. She's just walked out. I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in the old house, like the Mary Celeste. Where did she go? She, she, she just got up and walked she, out. Tell her she's not allowed to walk out. Where's she going? She's got the lure or something. I don't, she don't know what kind of girl. She can't ask him. Is she wearing any clothes at all? I can't see. She must think maybe there's devils working on here. She's Why is it the girls walk out? Why did she walk out? Men never walk out, me. I'd never seen a man walking out of here in my life. She back here? Yes, here's Emma now. Emma, what does that say there now? Jack of Hearts. See, she says Jerry Jack of Hearts. Hearts. Yeah. Where did she ask him where she went? Jerry wants to know where did you go to? Oh, you went for Hughes. She went to the fax machine for Hughes fax. <laughs> Hughes fax. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right, then. OK, uh, that's very impressive. Right, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. That was really that was worth, worthwhile doing, wasn't I it? No. Hi. Yeah, OK. Yeah, that was great. I'll, I'll just hang him up. Nothing like a card trick. Can uh, you get, talk and I'll get um, an I can talk. Well, I can talk. It's not like a, that, that went down like a lead balloon. I, I thought that say. was very good. I enjoyed that. You see, things, that's, things, that's the sort of thing that works on television. You, you see, know, I, I, no, it's it, not I think it worked all right because I was... Uh, I was. I didn't I was think it sat well at all. No, I think uh, people were disappointed. What was, what was the name that. of our man? What man was that? Remember the man that we watched years ago? Hello. 
the man that's Chan Canasta. Chan Canasta. Yeah, Chan Canasta. Do you usually read from books? You should call yourself Sean Canasta. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> He's to tour Ireland. I like that. Don't pretend you're in your honeymoon. Where's he from? Chan Canasta. He ah. pretended to be Oriental. Hey, but where was I think he? He was not? from Down Patrick or somewhere. He was like Edmund Heath. I know. I never believed Edmund Heath was English. You know. And then I really was f was forced to believe it when he, he wouldn't drop his English accent even when he died. Well, where was he from? I assume England. Was... Yes. But I never believed he was English. I thought he was just talking like that, you know. Because it's always, remember, people used to be on the stage, you always listen to, listen to them with English accents. Remember the way it's the way we were brought up. Yeah. You know, we used to think that we were no good. Remember? He stayed in a house close to us. As a matter of fact, he did, yes. Uh, Not adult... to you. You didn't know. No, but I'm, I just, I'm just, what I'm saying to you is that I don't care. That's what you're uh, a, a dog has been found. But it's not often that a big star stops in a house. I saw Michael, you know? I met Michael Holiday one day on my way to school. You did not. Yes, I did. Someday I'm, I'm going to write the story of my life. And I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you now. I went to school, Rosemount Boys School. Are you, are you the boy that told me the story about... Uh, had he a white Dexter? Yes. But I'm going to is tell that, you something that, else is now. Is that your story? It's my story. I remember he... On, on Rosemount Hill? Yes, it's my story. I, I, coming down Rosemount The point Hill. is, where was he coming from? Exactly. Now, this, let me just fill in for the benefit of the people. Now, let me just tell you for the benefit of the people. Michael Hawley was a big star. Someday I'm going to write... Right. He had a chin. The story he had a of Chin is right. Yeah. And he would... It was a very big deal for him to come to Northern Ireland. He was a sailor. Was he? Mm. Well, was anyway. It, was that Russ, Russ, Russ? Russ Connery, he was Russ. a sailor, but he I only think, nine, he only nine Michael, and a half fingers. I think Michael Hall was a sailor too. Listen, yeah, right. Sorry. Can we just leave that? Anyway. No, but it, I thought, the reason I'm saying that is because you being a port man, you being a, a, a That man, was when I was a child, though. Yes, I know, but we had a lot of boats. We had a lot of boats. And maybe see, he was here before. No, you see the point? No. Maybe he knew a girl when he wore a uniform. Do you know where I'm coming from? Well, let's put it this way. Right. If I met you... Mm -hmm. But you're have, a big star. If I'm a, chin. But if you're Engelbert Humperdinck... Right, I'll be Engelbert Humperdinck. Can, how can you be Engelbert Humperdinck? Sing a wee bit of something. No, I'll be Tom Jones. Be Tom Jones. <coughs> I took off like Tom. Right, right. <coughs> I'm no Tom Jones. You're Tom Jones. Right. right. I'm going to school mm -hmm. at 8.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm labouring up Craigan Hill, yes. past Brook Park, up yes. to St. Rosemount Boys School, mm -hmm. where nothing ever happens at half eight on a Tuesday morning. Right. And I see you walking down whistling. Yes. What do I think? No, I, I'm told I'd be coughing. You're coughing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> and I see you and I go, hello, Tom. And I go, hello. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I'll say, well, what have you been up to, Tom? I was <coughs> with a, a friend of mine <coughs> just up the hill there. <coughs> And I'd say, catch yourself on, Tom. I know what you're on. I'm a man of the world. I may be 11, but I know the score. Mm. You're with a woman, weren't you? No. <coughs> see, see I, I think he was with someone. Well, why, why, why wouldn't he be? But it's most unusual. It's why did he not get a taxi? That's what I was thinking. Why did he not get a taxi? But you see, which makes me think that Michael Halley was here before because he knew his way around. Well, you see, you either go up the hill or down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you don't spend the night with a it's guard. A and hill. then the guard shows you the front door and says, you walk down that hill and keep on turn left and turn right. And it's happened to me many times. <laughs> <a minute. laughs> no, I think I think Michael Holly was here. He must have been stationed here. Yeah, don't be silly. He was, he was, how's your father, how's your mother working? Yeah, but you don't walk home from that. I often did. Did you? <laughs> often did something he had to. You're thrown out. Found a dog. A grey and tan male Cairn Terrier has been found in Dial's business... What else did business... he sing? Pardon? What else did he sing? I can't remember. You know, you know one that you sing all the time. Come on. Story of my life. Mm, what was the other one? Well, the, one the big one, come on. Look, I can't remember the big yes, one. Yes, you do. Tell me the big one quick. Oh, the runaway train went, went over the hill and she blew. Woo, woo. Ah, uh, yeah. The hill and she blew. Woo, woo. Oh, the, the runaway train, train went over, over the hill and the last we heard she was glowing still and she blew. Funny how that stuff never leaves you. Never.